Hi everyone and welcome to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols and I am excited to kick off the show today talking to Kathy Fegans with the YWCA and we're talking the tribute to women. This has been around for a long time now. Yes it has Sheridan. Uh, we, this is actually our 29th year. I was gonna ask, yeah. I'm like it's gotta be up in the 20s, so 29 years. Yes, and this is the first year that we have opened up nominations to women uh, outside of this area. So it, it'll now extend to our entire service area, which includes 13 counties in Southwest Virginia oh, and wow. eight in Northeast Tennessee. Oh my goodness, so this is exciting. So tell us a little bit about what is Tribute to Women? Well, Tribute to Women is a very exciting fundraiser for the YWCA. Um, it recognizes outstanding women in three separate categories, nurture, empower, and transform. And um, we, we uh, three women in each of those three categories is selected. And we have judges that are outside of the state of Tennessee and the state of Virginia to keep it unbiased, yeah, <laughs> correct, um, who will uh, read the nomination forms and make the final selections. And so we'll have nine winners altogether, wow. and they will be honored on April 23rd in our Tribute to Women banquet at the train station. That's great. Yes. And I mean, we really do have a ton of women that we can select for this. I think once you get into the prof process, it's, it's tough to decide. It's very tough to decide, and that's why it's so important that if you know an outstanding woman in any of these communities or counties that you would like um, to recognize because they've made a difference in their communities around those three areas specifically, it's important that you fill out that nomination form as carefully as you can to include the many qualities that that person has. This is great, great news. So now if you know somebody that you want to nominate, now is your chance. Um, is there a website they can go to to get this form? Yeah, yes, there is. Nominations need to be in by February 14th of this year, by 5 p.m. February 14th. Our website is ywcatnva.org forward slash tribute dash to dash women. Perfect, yes. we will get that on the screen. That's a mouthful, so yeah. <laughs> we need to keep it up there for a while yeah, maybe so you can do. write it down do. and that way you can get the form, yes. fill out the form, have it sent in by the 14th of February right. and then you all take it from there. That's right, and I wanted to recognize our Tribute to Women Planning Committee Chair, Heidi Dulabon. She will be chairing the committee this year, and she was a 2019 Tribute Award recipient. So we're excited to have her chair this committee this year. We've had a lot of women that have been able to be a part of this, and I think it's great that you've expanded. What made you decide to expand? Well, our territory has expanded. Okay. We used to be the YWCA Bristol. Now we're the YWCA Northeast Tennessee and Southwest Virginia because there are so many people in these areas that are interested and desperately need our programs for affordable child care, uh, which is based on a sliding scale fee system. And it keeps people at work and gives them quality child care at the same time and also a Tech Girls program for at-risk fourth through eighth grade girls. That's an after-school STEM-based program. Um, and we have a teen pregnancy program. We have women's health and safety programs. In our expanded area, we are not actually going to set up YWCA facilities in each of these areas, but our goal is to consult and help those in need facilitate getting um, getting them set up themselves with our help. That's great. Yes. Thank you so much, Kathy, for being on and Thank for you. sharing this with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Sheridan. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host, Sheridan Nichols, and I've got Stephen Mott with me today from the city of Bristol, and we are talking about some job openings, and we need some help with the census. That's right. Tell us about this. So the 2020 census is coming. Um, we've got, not we, but the census has a bunch of jobs available. They're looking for tons of applicants. Um, so they're right now looking for enumerators, uh, and that's a term that dates back to the 1800s uh, for when the census was taken then. Uh, and those are just people who walk around um, or drive around and uh, make sure everyone's taking the census. So right now, it's, uh, their main focus is having people fill them out online. Um, so the enumerators will go after that round of online applications and catch everyone that's uh, that's not been counted yet. Okay. And so for that as well, um, they try to keep you in the neighborhood that you're in. So they kind of get that local presence within the census, you know, so you aren't knocking on strangers' doors too much. That's great. Uh, but the pay is also very competitive for it. It's $19 an hour and then 58 cents per mile driven. Wow. Um, the hours are very flexible, so you can work, you know, just an hour here and there or anything. And if you want to apply and know more, where do you go? Uh, so it's 2020census.gov and you'll be able to apply online there. We also have a job fair that's ongoing. Uh, we had two days this week and it was very successful. We had a, a great turnout. Um, but you can definitely apply online. You'll also uh, be able to come to our job fair and have some assistance in applying. And there are also recruiters there that can give you a lot of information uh, that's pretty useful for the application process. Absolutely. Well, tell me a little bit more about the job fairs. Right. So um, it's at the library. It'll be the 28th and 29th from 1 to 4. We'll have recruiters there, of course, able to give you that information, and we'll have, uh, you know, some assistance in the application process. So, if you're curious about it, come down, and uh, you'll be able to get some information about it, and uh, they'll be happy to help. And when does the census end in 2020? They have to have everyone counted and sent, um, you know, to the president. Uh, by December. Um, okay. It's in the Constitution, uh, but they try to end it around August. Um, so we'll start to see, you know, some information come in in March, uh, and that's when it starts. But when you uh, fill out the census, it's only 10 questions, and uh, you'll be able to go online or you'll be able to fill it out in paper. That's great. So most of us need to start looking for that because we'll be getting it very soon yes. and fill that out because it really helps. It helps in yes. terms of like funding and grants and all yes. sorts of things for our community. Yes. For every person that's uncounted in Tennessee, uh, in your community, that's over $1,000 lost per one person who's wow. not counted. So having everyone counted is very important. It helps fund all of these programs for everyone. Um, to great. help make our community better. And that's what we want. Well, Absolutely. Stephen, thank you so much for coming in. It's always good to have um, good news like job openings. Yeah, absolutely. So we appreciate it yeah. and stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host, Sheridan Nichols, and I've got Justine Norton with me and Allie Fry. They are from Tennessee High, the drama department, and they're going to talk to us about the production that's coming up very soon yes. um, of Xanadu. Yes. <laughs> now, how did we choose Xanadu? Um, it was mostly, we were trying to, because last year we um, did the 25th. Annual Putnam County Spelling yeah. Bee. 
And I think that uh, our uh, drama director, Mrs. Davis, which she's amazing, yes. <laughs> um, she really wanted to do something kind of more retro and just something a little bit more like fun and more like overproduced. So we definitely were like Xanadu all the way. Yes. This is exciting. Well, I don't think I've ever even seen the show Xanadu. <laughs> I've seen the movie, yeah. but I didn't even know there was a play. So this, I've got to go. When oh. when do we go? Yeah. When do we get um, tickets? The show is during Valentine's Day weekend. So it is the 14th, 15th, and 16th. Okay. And if we want to get tickets, how do we do that? Um, you just uh, go up to the auditorium of Tennessee High School, and they should be there. I don't know if we pre-sell them yet, but... Um, we saw them at the show. That's great. And there's plenty of seating. Yes. So everybody can yes. go. And how long have you been rehearsing? Um, Since the start of, we had auditions in the beginning of December or the end of November, yeah. somewhere around there. And we've been rehearsing since Christmas break. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So is this the big show of the year? Yes. Would yes. you say? Yes, the big show. And tell us about your roles, Allie. I am Kira. I am. I fall in love with Sonny, who is the male lead. He's played by Brandon Price. And you are? I am Mel Pomini, <laughs> and I am pretty much uh, plotting against her. And I also have an evil psychic who is Finley Large. Oh, she's amazing. She's awesome. <laughs> this yeah. is great. So really, in real life, you all are friends. Yes. yes but good on the rivals. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yes. So I know you're a G junior, and you're a senior. Yes. So is this something you're going to want to pursue? Um, I definitely am hoping to be able to uh, continue my career as an actress, um, but if not, I do have my good backup plans of nursing and all of that, so. So that's great. What about you, Allie? Um, I will probably always do theater, um, whether a community theater or what, but I do also have backups. I'm thinking about journalism currently, so it'll probably change though. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but Xanadu, you just are excited about this. Yes. You guys yes. are ready to go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just did choreography, so everyone's yeah. a little sore. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. So if there, there's music. There's dancing. Mm -hmm. How long's the production? Um, I I have. An hour and a half, maybe? Yeah, yeah estimating hour, hour and a half. half. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And you guys are ready for your lines? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Yes. Yes. You will be when yes. it's time to go. Yes. yes. Well, this is exciting. So if you yes. want to do something really fun over Valentine's Day weekend, <laughs> Go see the drama department at Tennessee High in their first production of Xanadu. Yes. Thank you for being on today. We really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you for letting us come on here and talk about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host, Sheridan Nichols, and I've got April Norris with me today, and we are talking about the vendor outreach meeting. Tell us about this. Um, it's something that we started a few years ago just to kind of reach out to our vendors within the area and invite them to come and learn about doing business with the city. Um, it's always great to have options um, when we are looking for goods and services. Um, it takes a lot to keep the city going and a lot of different vendors. So it's a great opportunity to get to know new vendors and for them to get to know us and how we do business. So when is the meeting? It'll be on February the 13th at 3 o'clock. It'll be held in the Annex building um, in the conference room. Tell us about some of the vendors the city currently uses. Oh, wow, we have just a multitude. I mean, we have from office supplies um, down to pouring concrete. I mean, that's as wide of a range as, as it goes as far as vendors, so. And you definitely, the city always likes to keep it local if possible. We do. We like to do business locally, so we that's why we're encouraging all of our local vendors to come out and let us find out what they can offer us in the same there, the other way around, so. Is this the first time you've had a meeting like this? Um, it's my first time, so it'll be my first opportunity to get to, to meet every all of our vendors, current and potential, so. Um, but we've, we, our first meeting we did like this was in 2017, so. 
And I'm sure it's been very successful. It has. I mean, we have a lot of our current vendors come out just to say hello, and then we get some new ones in, because on that day, you'll be able to sign paperwork and everything if you feel like you have something to offer the city. Is there anything that the city is looking for in particular? Nothing in particular this year. Um, just just to reach out and let them know that we're here if you know and this is what we need um, and for them to let us know hey this is what we have so that's great well april thank you so much for sharing thank that you. with us make sure to mark your calendars february 13th at three yes. it will be a great chance for local vendors to come in and all get together and meet each other and i'm sure some of the vendors could even work together of course, course yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really a great opportunity networking. it is a great networking opportunity as well so that's great don't go anywhere we'll be right back everyone and welcome back to Inside Bristol. I am talking with Cheryl Stickley from the YWCA today. This is one of my favorite things that the YW does. It really is amazing. This is, you can see we've got some beautiful prom dresses here and this is a chance for girls to go prom shopping at the YWCA mm -hmm. and not have to spend a fortune to get some really beautiful dresses. Well, we are really excited about the prom dress community event that we have, and we call it a community event because um, we want to make sure that every girl has a prom dress, even if she can't afford one. So, um, you know, we the prom dresses are $25, um, but if a girl cannot afford one, we give her a scholarship, and so she can, you know, have a prom dress for free and make sure that she can go to the prom and enjoy herself. We've got three dresses here that are all very different styles depending on what you like. How many dresses do you typically have? Oh, we have tons of dresses. We actually, well, right now we're actually ex um, accepting donations for dresses until February 28th. Um, and so we, we really would like to have any dresses, but uh, especially the 16 plus sizes, um, those really go pretty fast. But we have lots of different dresses. Um, you know, like these are all very different, but you're right, yeah. We accept anything because people like different unique things. Right, or, all different yes. colors mm -hmm. and yeah. short, long, puffy, mm -hmm. more, you know, sleek, so we that's do. great. And we also have um, dressing room areas that um, are in our gym that people can go and try on dresses too, and it's kind of fun actually um, helping all the girls. You get to, it's kind of like say yes to the dress, you get to see them try on dresses, and last year I got to see a mother um, with her daughter, you know, she's trying on a dress, and the dress that she picked was a dress that looked like a dress that she had wore to a prom. Aww. So it was really sweet. Um, that so, is yeah. sweet. And you also have some accessories like shoes we do. and purses. Yeah, we um, we have shoes and purses that we accept too. Um, so hopefully, you know, if we get a lot of those accessories, we you know we can give those out um, to girls who need those. We just give those away. Um, so that's great. But um, and yes, we're having it. Um, Thursday, March 5th and 6th and the 7th. The 5th and the 6th, it'll be from 3 to 6 p.m. at the YWCA um, in Bristol. And then we will have it on the 7th um, in the gym from 8 to 5. Okay. So we've got plenty of space. and So mark really that nice. in your calendars to go shopping for some prom dresses. Mm -hmm. And by February, and of course, 28th, make sure you make your donation. Are there any stipulations with that? Do they need to have them dry cleaned or before bringing them? Um, that would be nice, but we, you know, we'll also take them if they're not too. We'll, we'll take any of the dresses. Um, and also, uh, we're having an event um, January 30th. Um, at the Cascade Draft House in Bristol, um, and we are going to be accepting um, accessories. We're kind of having an accessory drive where people can bring accessories, and um, and it'll kind of be a good time. So it'll be nice. And this but. is great. And all the proceeds, of course, go to help all the programs at the YWCA. Yes. And of course, mm -hmm. I mean, it is. You've got all these beautiful dresses in all different sizes, all different colors mm -hmm. that are affordable and will make your night really special. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, thank you so thank much you. for joining us today. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.